Hello, MJ7NLK here and welcome back to the channel. If you're already a subscriber then I would like to thank you for your continued support and if not then please click the subscribe button as it really does help the channel out. Today we are going to be looking at the President Bill 2 CB radio. This is the smallest CB radio I have seen from President and they weren't wrong in using the words ultra compact in their marketing. We are going to pull it apart and see what scope it has for modification. We will also be accessing the factory services menu and running the usual power tests. Now let's get the disclaimer out of the way. Modifying a radio is at your own risk. You will have legal obligations in your region with regards to radio transmissions, licensing and power outputs. You should always ensure that you are not causing a nuisance and more importantly not causing any radio interference or distress to others. Please do not break the law in your region. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Well here it is, the President Bill 2, and this is a very small radio box. I know my President Richard radio so well that I now call him Dick, so give me a couple of seconds while I get my dick out so we can compare sizes. Well, there you go. That is a President Richard radio, which is about the normal size of a radio box. Some are a little smaller, but uh, that's generally the size that they are. And you can see the size difference here with the President Bill 2. So box comparison out of the way. Let's uh, have a quick run around the box and see what it says. So running around the box, it's uh, President Bill 2, as it says. It has ultra compact on the front, and I don't doubt that. It has the two plus three year President warranty, which is pretty standard on all of their radios. This QR code takes you to the President Bill 2 page on their website. Seven color display, uh, automatic squelch control, and Vox built in. And as it says at the bottom, engineered to be the very best. So having a look on the base or the sides of the radio box, we don't find out a great deal extra there or there. Um, looking at the back, we have the usual President stencil, which shows a DNC 520 microphone, which again is standard on virtually all President radios. And that has the up-down buttons, so it's the up-down version. Um, this is the stencil of the radio itself. It's quite unusual to see that they've listed out all of the relevant options here uh, and numbered them for the relevant keys and buttons. We don't usually see that on the back of a President box. We can see the SO239 connector. We have an external speaker jack and we have what looks like a fixed power cable, but we'll have a look at that when we get inside. So apart from that, not much else to show you on the box. So let's crack on and unbox it. So let's go ahead and open this up. So inside the box we have a number one President CB sticker, which is a normal affair with the President radios. We get the user manual, which again it's nice to have a printed user manual. And oh my goodness that is tiny. We have the radio itself, which I'll just put to one side and then the accessories pouch here in the box. Now the accessories pouch is about the same size as the radio pouch, but anyway, let's have a look inside here and see what we get. We get the usual DNC 520 up-down microphone. I won't take that out of the packaging because uh, I have plenty of them, so I'll just use one of the ones that I already have here. Uh, we have a mounting bracket to mount this to your uh, vehicle or underside of a shelf. Um, and we have the accessories pouch, 
which contains a microphone clip, screws, a spare fuse, and the sort of nuts and bolts to attach to the bracket. So moving that out the way, let's have a look at the radio itself. Sorry for the crinkly noises. That is tiny, absolutely tiny. So this is the President Bill 2. Now the power cable is a fixed cable, um, but it does have a cigarette lighter or accessory type socket for going into a 12 volt supply. And as it says here, only 12 volts. So this is not a 24 volt compatible device. Now it seems to come with, or it does come with a mounting template or bracket already. So let's see if we can get the radio out. Yes, we can, we just slide it. So we just release these two clips and slide it out. So that's giving it a fair bit of heft. And this is the actual radio itself. So just gonna move in a bit closer here. We're gonna do the peel, always, always satisfying. Okay. So that's off. So we have here a uh, LCD display, which has an arrow on the top and the bottom. So you push the display to go up and push the display to go down channels. Be interesting to see uh, how that stands the test of time. We have four buttons on each corner. The microphone socket, nice to see a USB socket on the front, which is a five volt 2.1 amp and we have a on off switch and behind that we have an automatic the automatic squelch control so not a great deal going on here we have a little speaker i'm sure that will be tinny as hell but we'll have a look and the case itself appears to be a heat sink which is bound to be needed it's going to get hot this thing so um the entire upper case and rear section is a heatsink. So that's that's it for the President Bill 2, and that is absolutely tiny. Um, let me just get me uh, get me Richard. I've got one on the shelf here. Hang on a second. So this is a normal sized radio. In fact, we'll take the microphone off this because I'm gonna use that one. So this is a, a normal sized uh, radio compared to the, the bill. So we can see exactly what sort of size difference we're looking at there. And if I want to be completely accurate, we'll just lift it up to the same as the frame. So this is a minute little radio. Okay, let's get it connected up and get, let's do some power tests and power readings. So here we go with the standard power test. So let me quickly talk you through the setup here. We have the President Bill 2, which is connected to the bird. And the bird is connected to a tap attenuator, which is at the back here, which just takes a small feed for the oscilloscope and then goes out to a 100 watt 50 ohm dummy load. So the radio is set to FM at the moment and let's see what it's producing out of the box. So just over three watts there. So with a 10 watt slug we're on the bottom scale and we move the decimal place back by one. So 40 is four, 20 is two and we're getting um, just over three, so 3.1 watts there, I think. 3.1, 3.2 watts. So let's have a look at uh, FM UK and see what we get there. The same, 3.1, 3.2. And then we switch to AM and switch to peak mode and have a look and see what the carrier is outputting. Uh, 
Again, exactly the same, 3.1. So out of the box, we're getting about uh, 3.1 watts. Uh, let's do a quick tone test. Just to be safe, we'll switch to a 25 watt slug because it may exceed 10 watts. And we'll pump in a continuous tone. So that's about 12 watts. With a 25 watt slug, we're using the upper scale. So about 12, 12 watts on uh, AM with a loud continual tone. So that's out the box what we get with this uh, President Bill 2. And next we're going to have a look inside the radio and, uh, and see what's going on. So before we open the radio up, let's have a look and see the factory services menu and see what sort of power output we can increase the unit to without modification. So in order to do this, you need to access the factory services menu and that requires a few key presses at the same time. Uh, ninja moves, if you will. So let's have a look and let me show you how to do that. So you push and hold the PTT button on the microphone you push the AM FM button and the EMG button at the same time. So all three must be depressed and then you turn the radio on and then release. You'll see that the screen is a clear color which denotes that you're in the factory services menu. You can't change the background color of the screen in the factory services menu. So um, it may not come across on the camera as well as the green or orange background. So the first value that we have is PL, which is the FM, it says FM, low power adjustment. And the current value is 135. So we can quickly cycle through the options. I'm using the up down button on the microphone to cycle through the options. The next option is FM, which is FM deviation mode and the value that the factory have set here is 500. Leave this well alone. The next option is AL, which is AM low power amplitude adjustment. Again, leave this alone. My value is 75. The next option is the software version number, and this radio has version 1.0. So going back to the PL setting, which is the FM low power adjustment setting, the value here is 135. And if I key up the microphone, I can see on the watt meter that we're 3.1 watts. So if you keep keyed up, you can use the up down buttons on the screen to increase this or decrease this value. So 139, 140, 142, so 145 is the maximum setting that PL power load will, or power low, excuse me, will allow. And the radio is now outputting about four watts. And I can see that on the watt meter behind. I can't show you that at the same time, but I'll show you after. So the maximum power setting that we can get in an unmodified state is 4 watts with a PL setting of 145 on this radio. So to get out of the factory services menu you just turn the radio off and turn it back on again and then that will return to its standard mode. So we're currently in FM and I'll just move these boxes out the way and you can see the watt meter so let me bring that a bit closer. So channel 20, mid-band, FM. The radio is now outputting just a smidgen under 4 watts, which is great. So having done the factory services menu, we'll now open the radio up and see what's inside. So in order to open the radio up, you need to get a Torx T8H piece or bit for the end of your screwdriver. That's going to be rather difficult to show you on the camera, but we'll have a go, which is that type of bit. Don't know if that comes across very well. 
if you get an iFixit kit, you'll uh, you'll you'll have one. This is the large kit, and they they definitely have all of the Torx bits in there. So in order to open the radio up, we need to turn it over, and there are four screws, and there's one unfortunately behind this sticker, which will need to be removed. In order to get it, we'll tidy that up after, and let's remove these screws. Okay, now we can remove the lid, which may take a bit of prying to get it off. And probably tackle it from the power supply side. There we go. So the lid comes off. The speaker is on a removable wire, so you can pull that out if you need to. Oh my word, that is some pretty small electronics. Let me remove the speaker and I will give you a close up of the internals. So now that the speaker's been removed, the upper case, um, you can see that the sticker, unfortunately, is, uh, yeah, it's made a right mess trying to get that sticker off. So we're going to use my favorite substance, which is a sticky stuff remover. I think uh, Gugon is a similar type of product in other areas. And uh, if we soak this well in Gugon, we should be able to uh, take this off. And let's see if we can get it looking nice again. And there we have it, as good as new. Completely removed that sticker from the base. It, uh, it put up a good fight, but uh, the uh, sticky stuff remover certainly did its job. Okay, let's do a close up of the internals. So here we are. So this is the internals of the Bill 2. And it is absolutely tiny electronics in there. But there is one good sign that I can see. And that is at this top corner, we have the loop. And just below it, God knows how you get in there, we have the jumper. So we should be able to modify the radio by cutting the wire and jumping or moving the jumper over one position. So that's the next task. So I'm going to set up for that and we'll get that done. So let's perform the modification. Now ideally you would want to remove the circuit board and desolder the wire but President do use a very thick wire or a very thick shielding on the wire so even once cut it's uh, it's unlikely to touch anything that it shouldn't so for the purposes of this video we will uh, simply cut the wire and i can uh, go to the trouble of removing the board later if needed now the jumper you're going to need a pair of uh, tweezers and preferably flat um, tweezers rather than sort of sharp pointed tweezers to, to get that out and move it over the one position. So let me do that now. Okay, so we've moved that over. Let's see if we can show that on the camera. That has moved over one position. Definitely a job for somebody with younger eyes than mine. <clears throat> and we will now uh, just snip the wire
and we'll just make sure that it's nice and away from everything else. So let's see if we can show that. So the wire has been cut and the jumper has been jumped, if you like. So I'm going to reassemble the radio now and we'll turn it on and see if we're in modified mode. Okay, so the radio has been reassembled and we've reconnected it back up and armed with a fresh cup of tea, we'll have a look and see. So what I'm expecting when I turn the radio on is to see TS on the screen, which denotes that it's um, the radio has been modified. So let's turn it on. And there we have it, TS. And channel 20, hopefully that's coming across on the screen and you can see the, uh, the Bill 2's screen. So you can see that uh, we're in channel 20 and an A has appeared next to the 20, so that is band block A. You can watch any of my other videos to, to look at the, uh, the different band blocks and functionality that gets introduced. With a radio, when you modify it, if we, uh, as a matter of interest, if we push and hold F key, it'll go T0, and you'll notice that everything is now in a 5 kilohertz decrement, so the frequency is now 27200, and if we push and hold it again, back to TS, it'll be 27205. So that's how you access your decrement mode. Um, and let's just do a very quick power test. I'll do a proper one after. The radio is now outputting 15 watts in modified state. So the next thing we're going to do is go into the factory services menu and see if we have a new menu that has appeared. So let's do that now. So into the factory services menu, we have PL145 that we had before and FM, AL, software version and PL. So we don't actually get another power mode that we can access in the factory services menu. So as a matter of interest, I wonder if we decrease the power output here, whether the radio's output will decrease. In fact, interestingly, when we're in the factory services menu, uh, it's only outputting four watts. So turn the radio off. Turn it back on, and we get the 15 watts. So it looks as if the maximum power output is achieved when modified, and there doesn't appear to be any way of uh, tuning that. Okay, so we've set up for the power test. This is the modified power test, and we have a 25 watt slug in the bird, and we're using the top scale on the watt meter. So in FM mode, We're outputting 15 watts. FM UK. Just over 15 watts. And if we switch to AM and peak, the carrier is outputting about 6 watts. And, <coughs> excuse me, if we pump in a tone... about 17, 17 and a half watts. So that's what this radio will output uh, when modified. There is no adjustment that I can find on the radio when you're in high power mode, like other President radios. But that's not unsurprising due to the size of the radio. And uh, incidentally, you press the F key to cycle through your, if I can just show you this, hopefully that will you can see that okay. So you have an A on the screen. The A is displayed there. If you push the F key, you go to band block B, C, D, E, 
F G H I J and then back to A so the modification on this radio doesn't just unlock it for your A, B and C band blocks it completely unlocks the radio and gives you the full spectrum so one final test that we're going to do before we wrap up is you might be worried about the radio if it was outputting 15 watts as to the amount of heat that it's going to generate and the radio is uh, is not uh, not a, not even slightly warm at the moment to the touch so um, we're going to have a look at it through a thermal imaging camera um, and we'll have a look at the radio if I can get these lights to behave so the radio's about 32 or 33 degrees. <clears throat> so we're going to key up and keep it keyed up for a while and just see how warm it gets. 33, 34. Forty-five. So we'll we'll stop there. The radio is quite warm now in this particular location, as the thermal imaging camera was showing. But you can certainly touch it. It's uh, it's handled the heat pretty well. So now that the testing's over, I've returned the radio back to its unmodified state. So turning the radio on, we can see that it's, uh, it's back to normal and is outputting 4 watts with a 10 watt slug loaded. So what a great little radio. Talking about power, the radio pulls about 1.7 amps when it's outputting at its maximum power output in unmodified state, i.e. 4 watts. And the radio, when modified and outputting 15 watts, is drawing 3.1 amps. So what a, what a lovely little radio this is. And it's nice to see that when modified, it completely opens the radio up, like a President Richard or a Walker 2. And you get all of the band blocks all the way through, rather than just A, B and C. It's brilliant to see that it's got a &L filter, noise blanker, high cut filter... You know all of the uh, all of the relevant features in such a very small little radio, which only weighs 320 grams. So all in all, President, you get a thumbs up from me on this one. Well, I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you did, then please help the channel out by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This really does help and ensures that I can continue to provide content. Please feel free to buy me a coffee, details in the description below, and if you have any questions or comments, then you know what to do. All I ask is that you keep it respectful. Nasty know-it-alls need not apply. Well, until next time, stay safe, stay happy, and catch you in the next one.